Hello, lovelies! It's your girl, Lady Pelvic with Pelvic Gaming, and do I got a special review for you. Radiant Historia Perfect Chronology, released on the Nintendo 3DS on February 13th, 2018. This is a remake of Radiant Historia, a DS game released February 22nd, 2011. I have only played Perfect Chronology. Now, before we dive in, I want to say a huge thank you to Lala Kiss Kiss Beam for gifting me this game. If it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be getting this exciting review. The story opens up with childlike elves mourning the deserted land of sand due to an unnamed and fallen empire's folly centuries ago. As the desertification approaches, a fierce war rages over what little fertile land remains. Alastel to the east, who has a devout people of religion, and to the west, Granord, run by a widowed and unkind queen unfit to rule. Our hero, Stock, is a part of Alastel's special intelligence, and is sent on a mission by special intelligence leader, Heiss. Stock is to collect another agent who has crucial information on Granord, but before he's sent out, he's gifted a mysterious blank book called The White Chronicle. Stock is also accompanied by two new companions, Rainy, an outgoing, tenacious mercenary, and her mercenary friend, Marco, who's a bit on the short side, but thoughtful and resourceful companion. Just as they're about to prepare for the mission, Stock has a vision of Rainy and Marco's death. He was shaken, but as a military man, he proceeded with the mission, and unfortunately, the vision comes to reality. However, he soon awakens to the awesome power of the White Chronicle. He comes to Historia, a world that rests in the gulf of time where two guides of Historia greet him. You discover with the White Chronicle, you can rewrite history, redoing or undoing the actions done in the past and traveling between timelines. So Stock must use the power of the White Chronicle to win the war, or perhaps uncover the threat that consumes the entire world. Radiant Historia has an excellent story, whether you decide to play the original or the amended version with all the additional content. The playable cast and the NPCs are astounding. The toils and loss of war are truly seen and felt, then unfortunately rewritten for the better, as it's the point of time travel. It's just a lot of the emotional impact is ripped away in a sense that it didn't feel rewarding as you progress story or do a side quest or two and wow, we avoided this, or wow, this character had a sudden change of heart. It made interesting characters seem super shallow and flat when all you had to do was change one thing. I know this game is now called Radiant Historia Perfect Chronology, but it just felt a little too perfect. I did, however, greatly appreciate the journey these characters took you through between the two splitting timelines. Occasionally, I did find myself getting confused, going back and forth through time, and in different timelines, no less. But the detailing of events helps quite a bit. I think we all can relate, wondering if we chose different choices throughout our life. Super salad, stay up late playing a game, or maybe get some well-deserved and needed rest. Or taking it a step further, going back in time to a video I made called Top 5 Favorite JRPG Battle Systems, and maybe revising it to incorporate Radiant Historia. Maybe? Yeah, let me grab my totally legitimate and not Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild creating a champion White Chronicle and go back in time and fix this. Be right back. This seems to be the place. Sorry, Persona 5. And now, my job is done. Was someone just here? Radiant Historia has some of the most satisfying and clever gameplay, and I absolutely regret not playing it sooner to incorporate it on my list. You have a three-person party and several enemies on a 3x3 grid. You can move enemies around the board, essentially stacking them up and hitting them multiple times and starting combos. Combos not only increase the damage you do, fill up your mana gauge, but increases the experience and money you earn afterwards. Once a mana gauge is filled, you can perform a mana burst, effectively removing an enemy turn. Later, it upgrades, allowing different maneuvers for each character. You can exchange your turn with a teammate or an enemy to better land combos. Doing so will leave your character in the red, meaning they're prone to critical attacks and ailments. Before entering a battle, consider striking your foes on the map to gain an advantage. The combat beautifully layers itself. Depending on enemy positioning, they may do more damage or have a stronger defense. You can lay traps to avoid obstacles. Try sending your enemies skyward. Some enemies can't be moved, so you have to bring the heat to them. Some enemies take more than one space, and it just keeps adding solid challenges. 
This battle system is amazing. Pulling off these wild combos, strategically moving enemies across the board, makes you feel like a tactical genius. I'm pretty sure after beating this game, I'm fit to lead an army. That's how good this game makes you feel. Perfect Chronology added an extra helping hand, that is, support attacks. Any characters on reserve will sometimes attack or buff your party. It's just layers on layers on layers, but in the best of ways. Mixing and matching your team to see what works best for the enemies at hand. Do you need to move enemies or hit multiple enemies at once with an attack that takes up an entire row or a column? It's an absolute blast to master this magnificent combat. And even though it can get cumbersome after a while, auto attack is thankfully a thing. All right, I think I gushed enough about the combat system, as there's a lot more aspects to Radiant Historia, mainly traveling between the two timelines. You won't be able to progress the story after a while in one timeline, so you'll have to jump to the other to figure out the puzzle. Maybe it's saving a merchant in one timeline, which will allow him to arrive in another or you opt to make a poor decision leading down the path of destruction. It's actually really fun getting bad endings and see what becomes of our heroes in the world. This also goes for side quests, which can be seen by a red quest log over a character's head. As we all know, time travel can be a very convoluted mechanic. Radiant Historia attempts to ease this by documenting each event. It gives you a nice summary of events that took place, shows the paths that have yet to be taken, or even manages side quests. But I gotta say, I still found the side quests very taxing. It's a mixed bag. I found some side quests to be easy, some to be frustrating. Trying out different times in each timeline till you figure out where you're supposed to be, you get jumbled after a while. And because you go back in time, sometimes you have to fight certain enemies again to get exactly where you need to be. They did their best in alleviating the repetitiveness of time travel by easily skipping cutscenes only to pick up from the new dialogue. Plus, in order to get the true ending, you must complete all key side quests seen by the key icon. When you get toward the end, I really recommend a guide to ensure that you got everything. So there's the storyline quest, and then there's the new character in Radiant Historia Perfect Chronology, Nemesia. There is a third timeline of sorts, Possible History. Side quests of worlds shape differently. Characters can be different from our main timelines, the war has taken a different turn, etc. You have to collect artifacts which are said to aid in stopping the desertification of the world. Just like in other timelines, there are key quests here needed to get the true ending. Also, as you progress, you'll be gifted environmental skills, like being able to push things or vanish to pass enemies. And the last big gameplay change is the added The Vault of Time, a dungeon that has normal enemies and some enemies you normally encounter later on. It's a place to grind, really, and you earn currency called mementos. Mementos can only be used in The Vault of Time to buy equipment, skills, and consumables. Those are some of the big gameplay changes. If you want a more detailed list of all the differences, I've linked to RPG site in the description. Now we cross over to the graphics and art, and the biggest thing people speak on is the changed art style, and I have some mixed feelings. My friend insisted that I use the original art, which can be purchased as DLC, and I did. But I did check out the new art, and depending on the character, I swing back and forth. For example, some characters, yeah, I'd be upset with. Like Rainy, you see here on the left that the art style, how her hair is shaded, prominent lips, it's so stylized and unique. Then we jump to Rainy on the right, and she's a butterface, all smoothed out. It looks generic, and they zapped out personality. She doesn't look as rugged, and the most offensive is Erica. The obvious felon here is her hair. In the original, she had a pixie cut, and that was awesome. How many princesses do you know have that look? Frankly, it was iconic. And they switched it out and gave her a common princess hair length. Erica isn't a prissy princess, she's the leader of a rebel faction, and she gets down and dirty. Not that she isn't elegant either, but she looks so battle-ready before. Here, again the style smoothed out and frankly uninteresting. And I'm a little biased here, but I like the dark shading of the old style. It reminds me of one of my favorite games. The new art isn't bad, but it just looks like a banalized version of the original. I will say a cool thing about the new art is their faces changed, expression is good, of course, with new character designs, really just Erica, they redid her sprite. There are also art event panels that you occasionally get. Then we move onward to the graphics. I think they're wonderful. Love the pixel art. The attacks were clean. I like when the characters leveled up. They did a cool animation. They had death animations. I think it's all beautiful. I also like that the world is small. I'd keep the same size, but maybe add a little bit more variation. I do think exploration was a bit limited. Depending on where you were in the story, it blocked you off from certain places. I get it was to keep continuity in the story, but it was really restrictive and frustrating having to click back to Historia to find a time where it's acceptable to be where you want to go. 
And lastly, the music. First, I want to say the added voice acting in Perfect Chronology was really well done, in my opinion. Definitely worth a listen. Then for the music, Yoko Shimomura is added again. And here's my thing. The music honestly reminds me of Kingdom Hearts, especially the battle music. Here goes! Anywho, I was impressed. Despite hearing the same tracks over and over, it didn't annoy me. That could be taken as a testament to Yoko's greatness. Overall, it's a good OST. It just sounds like a typical JRPG. So I guess my favorite track could be the town of Celestia, or Beastkind Rome, a chill and mystical place tucked away in forestry and magic. Okay, Radiant Historia gets an 8 out of 10. I think it's a wonderful game with an incredibly innovative and fun combat system. Easily the best part of this game. Some of the downsides for me in this game is finding the quests and doing them became a chore after a point. I mean, it was cool seeing how it impacted the future, but it was a slog after a while. And going back and forth through time between the different timelines got really, really repetitive. They really did their best to alleviate it, so I could give them credit there. And I said this before, I understand this is Radiant Historia perfect chronology, but the story was literally too perfect. There were times I thought, oh crap, this happened, and this is just a necessary loss. No matter how many times you go back and try to figure out and rework the past, this individual or this event has to happen in order for the best ending to occur. Nope. No. No. It's literally perfect. And how easy characters had a change of heart just made all of them feel so shallow. Despite all that, I do recommend this game. It's a lot of fun, and especially if you have a hard-on for Chrono Trigger, I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. As always, I would love to know your thoughts on Radiant Historia, Perfect Chronology, and what you thought of my review. Thank you for watching. Top Box is more reviews like this, and the bottom box is my Let's Play channel. Of course, don't forget to become a Patreon. Mwah!